Well, Randall, yeah, it's been a long time and, <laughs> and just so, um, you know, I have to say, I'm just, uh, I mean, you know, in these weird and strange times to be asked to do this is just, uh, it's just a treat for me. Yeah, me too. I, I really appreciate it, Peter. Uh, yeah, I always associate you with, you know, that, that fall that we were there together was just such a, uh, I, I just turned 40. Mm -hmm. And uh, that that first trip over there was just so uh, it really was a watershed moment for me in my work, in my, I don't know, my ambitions and all sorts of things. So it's been. Yeah, great. yeah, yeah. And well, I mean, and, and out of that, um, I mean, you you really uh, you and Brenda really made a stand. I mean, you you made a commitment to to being a part of the community, and and yeah. uh, and so yeah. Well, for me, like one of the first things I'm interested in is how is that how is that panned out? I mean, is that it, it's um, and and how you know what's do, do you like come every June? Are you just <laughs> waiting to get on the plane and get over there every every year? Yeah. So last year was the first time the first summer since 1997 that we didn't go. Mm. Uh, so, and we always go for a couple of months. So um, I guess I always had this idea when I was younger that I would do that standard American uh, artist uh, retreat to Maine. And I did do that for the first, I don't know, 10 or 12 years we lived out here, but then when, when we discovered Ireland and the foundation made it easy enough to return mm -hmm. then, and it was actually took less time to get to, to Ireland than it did to drive up to Maine. Um, it was kind of a no brainer. I think, I do think though, what drove me there the first few years was the kind of the, uh, the beauty of the place, just the, just the raw, spectacular, majestic beauty of it. Over time, I think it was more, it's become more about the people mm. um, and our friends there. The, the landscape, of course, is still really important to me, but mm. it's somehow being in that place and being at the center that is still, uh, it really lifts me up, especially after a kind of, uh, I'm, I'm still teaching and mm -hmm. uh, Swarthmore uh, can be kind of a hothouse in a lot of different ways. So. To get over there, it just uh, really, really centers me. Uh, yeah. And, yeah. And my well, something work. that you know, something that interests me, it, you know, in in your work, uh, and when I think about the work that's in the collection, uh, but also a lot, a lot of your other work is, I remember having, you know, having conversations with you and you talking about um, uh, growing up in South Dakota and being in the Midwest and that kind of landscape and. You know, because I'm a landscape painter who is very much um, interested in how memory and time, the condensing of time plays on memory and how it gestates and then how these images come out. You know, it's like for me, when I see some of your work, it's, I see that happening. I see South Dakota coming to Mayo <laughs> to a certain degree. And what's most interesting uh, um, or, or thought provoking is to plumb how memory and time works in these paintings. Yeah. So I'd, I'd love to hear what, what, what your response to that is. Well, well I, I think we do have that in common, Peter. And I recognize that right away when we were over there. And, uh, uh, yeah, I, you're right. I, my life was kind of bifurcated when I first started there. My, the experience I had growing up in the Midwest and my grandparents having a farm, uh, the kind of uh, terrible beauty to, to, <laughs> uh, to bring up Yates probably sooner than I should, but uh, it was there. It was there in the upper Midwest, you know, the kind of uh, brutal uh, conditions that farmers were faced with and yet there was this beauty about it as well. It was, uh, and I rec somehow recognized that when I was a kid. I, I think partly it had to do with my parents' appreciation of where they grew up. 
Mm -hmm. um, so then when I when I moved to the East Coast, um, I was starting to, I, I think, see the landscape out here in, in, in Maine. It was a little bit conflicting because it was so garden like out here. Mm -hmm. And uh, especially at Swarthmore, I mean, the whole campus is just a garden and everything is forested when you, you know, forests play a very heavy role in the landscape here. And uh, going up to Maine, you know, that's, that's, you've got the wide open expanse of the ocean, but I still wouldn't, it still wasn't like big sky country, you know, we're in South Dakota, but somehow going over there to Ireland, it, it really was like the, like South Dakota with a big blue thing out there on the horizon. Yeah. yeah. And I think that, of course, it's, it's very different too, but it was, it, it had something to do with the culture too, that agrarian culture. And you see farmers, mm -hmm. you know, throughout the day, it featured in the daily news <laughs> and weather forecast, you know. Um, so that all appealed to me, I suppose, in a kind of uh, nostalgic way, but uh, I, I don't, that didn't last very long, you know, it was more, after a while, it got into the, uh, the more serious, uh, complex, uh, the history of the place, which is so ancient. Somehow in the upper Midwest too, the, I was, we were always aware of the prehistory, you know, or at least pure European history. Um, my, my uncle would, at his farm, he would plow up these uh, granite mallet heads by that were made. I have some in my studio. Uh, they were they were carved by these woodland Indians, you know, three thousand years ago. Mm -hmm. And so that there were dinosaur bones too that people would dig up. Mm -hmm. Just that that kind of awareness of deep history was always there. And when I went to Ireland, it was, it was kind of similar that way, you know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah yeah and and so and there's you know within that within that kind of past and present um the, those those two things and then the, 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 there's this like timeline that that the making of 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 a painting kind of condenses and brings to the to to the forefront um yeah. and allows you as a creator to uh to be to be the presenter of that condensation of of time um is uh you know is it, it seems to me it allows you to bring up a lot of really uh, emotional stuff i mean there's yeah. there's there's a lot of emotion in in your work um yeah. and um you know i i'm assuming that's intentional well, it, I, it, it does have a way of coming out. And um, I worry sometimes that it might come across as a little uh, uh, <laughs> a depressing or funereal. Uh, and I think it does at times. But at, I think that's, um, that's, a, that's problematic. Uh, I do want it to be uplifting, but it's sort of similar to the artists that I think we have some things in common with. Mm -hmm. uh, American art still is kind of in my bones, uh, and people people like Hopper and uh, people like uh, George Innes, mm -hmm. uh, the kind of uh, emphasis on light and the poetics of light and space. So I think that that I think that has got that's what. Uh, develop my interest in architecture too, because um, buildings that had a kind of power over me, just experientially, like walking into my grandfather's barn was one of the most powerful mm. experiences I've ever had. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize that when I was a kid, but it, it just stays with you in a way that you know, like walking into Chartres Cathedral for the first time, or I'm, I've recently uh, developed a real passion for Carlo Scarpa, and I've got a colleague who he and I have, have really, uh, are just trying to find everything we can. To, and we, we kind of want to make a pilgrimage to Italy to, mm -hmm. see, to see his work, because um, I think he has a way of capturing in light and color and tone 
a lot of what I what I'm after in a painting, you know, hmm. I think you're after too. Um, how to stop somebody in their tracks, you know, and it's not. I again, I for me, a lot of it has to do with design and composition, and I feel like if I can get the, and that means both two dimensionally and three dimensionally. So. I'm not a plein air painter. I've never really felt, um, and I know you're like that too. I, I I have to get in the studio. I take a bunch of bits and pieces based on walks that I take, photographs I take, although I don't work directly from photographs, but I use them as kind of uh, source material. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I don't know. I, I've never made it. I've never made a, a film, but I kind of wonder if it's similar to the way filmmakers right. uh, work. Yeah, that's a really interesting idea. I hadn't thought of that. Yeah. But it makes sense, a lot of sense when I look at your work. When I look at your paintings, it's like I'm waiting for something to happen. There's a place there. Yeah. You know, in this barnyard or on this hillside where if there aren't figures in the piece and it's more of whether it's an architectonic landscape or a landscape itself, you know, something something is about to or just has happened. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and and I find that I mean there's the tension there that I think is very important in a yeah. successful piece. Yeah, I I I um I don't know. I think some of that happens during the uh, course of the painting where um, I might start out with one idea and then it gradually, because of what's going on in the uh, development of the composition, um, it starts to focus on something else. And mm -hmm. uh, right now I'm, during COVID, I, I, I think I was telling you, I, discovered this area of southern New Jersey, which is uh, very rural. And there's a lot of marshland right along the Delaware River, where the bay really opens up very wide and you start to see the ocean out there to the Atlantic. I really love this area. And there's a couple of real working class yacht clubs, boat yards, and mm. these boats kind of uh, standing there, you know, uh, when they're out of the water, I don't really paint them in the water. I like them kind of uh, suspended up on these, these tiny little toothpick. It's amazing the weight that these things can hold. And um, uh, I love the sculptural properties of them. And the, uh, but at the end of the day, there is something, yeah, there's something kind of ghostly about them. And mm -hmm. I, I, I like that. Um, yeah. Yeah, so there's so and that's the remarkable thing to me about your work because there is an intense specificity in in the rendering of 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 your objects and the and the, the beautiful drawing uh, and application of color and the tonalities, so it's a real specificity. But yet, when you bring all of these elements together. The, there's some kind of a transitory thing that that is happening that is really um, it's it's quite unique and you know I mean you mentioned American painters um, you know whether it's it's uh, it's Eakins or or um, or Homer or uh, uh, other artists a lot of their work has this kind of grounded uh, there's there's a grounding and when I look at your work, even though there is a solid foundation, I am not on the ground really it's there, yeah. there is atmosphere and there is a space for spiritual transitory something that's that's engaging and I'm, I'm, I'm that's what really uh, I'm really taken with that. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, I um, think I was when I was younger. Uh, well, I still am very influenced by certain by certain writers. Uh, I really fell in love with uh, Flannery O'Connor and Eudora Welty and uh, William Faulkner. I I, I, I kind of gravitated toward these Southern uh, Gothic <laughs> writers because uh, there was always that spiritual component, and I'm not. 
I've always been drawn to that. I'm not, I, I was raised an Episcopalian, which is sort of a Catholic without guilt sort of stuff, you know, <laughs> not too much guilt. So it was, but I loved, I loved the, I was bored to death when I was a kid, but when I grew up and I, I didn't, I stopped going to church very often, I started to miss the, um, that transcendent quality that going to church would give and you'd smell the incense and they were using the King James Bible at that. So there's a lot of these and thous and I hardly understood what any of it meant, but I love the way it sort of lifted us out of the everyday, you know, and then we go out and have breakfast afterwards or something. Yeah. Uh, and so I think I, I think I sort of see painting was that for me looking at paintings and being kind of mesmerized, being lifted out of the everyday. Mm. Um, the, um, I discovered Edwin Dickinson too when I was really young and I learned a lot from him just about drawing, um, particularly about shape relationships. I was really taken with that. Mm -hmm. And also his, uh, I'm not as adventuresome or as out there with uh, compositions and cropping as, as he was, but uh, that really excited me. And yeah. uh, so, yeah, I mean, all those artists that you mentioned, Wyeth too, who I got to yeah. know a little yeah. bit here, uh, it's kind of weird that I ended up, you know, about 20 minutes from him and I had the good fortune to get to meet him and get to know him a little bit uh, about 10 years before he died. Mm -hmm. And, um, he, he was, uh, it was, it was fascinating to talk to about people like Hopper. I mean, he, he knew he was good friends with Birchfield. Mm -hmm. So that, that was kind of, that was exciting to me. Okay. Uh, I think that there were certain things about his drawing and his composition that I really liked. Mm -hmm. I was more drawn, I think, to issues of color and light from other artists. Uh, mm -hmm. Vermeer, you know, just racks up there. And then I discovered, you know, Hammer Shoy meant a lot to me. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that kind of Casper uh, David Friedrich, although uh, I, I'm kind of interested in being a little bit looser, but um, well, I, I just, I mean, I just love Friedrich's. Work. It's just amazing, just yeah. amazing. And I think that was something that drew me to Ireland too, that. Yeah that ancient landscape, but also the European, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. the European, those, those, all the ruins, remember that yeah. and we yeah. could just, it, it, it's, I don't think it's that way so much anymore, but when we, when we went over there that I just couldn't believe how you'd get out of your car <laughs> and walk into a house that's been yeah. abandoned for five years. <laughs> I know. And there are Thank newspapers you. on the kitchen table. And yeah. uh, it was just, to me, kind of, I don't know if you ever met Bill Freeland. Um, I did, yeah. 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 Well, Bill Bill and I uh, were good friends, along with Magda, mm -hmm. uh, Tali. Uh, but Bill said that he went to Chester County. He moved out to Chester County because there were ghosts in Chester County. Mm -hmm. But then the, the, the ghosts went away. Mm -hmm. And then he started, he found Ireland. And he said, the ghosts are still there. And I, and I, 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 <laughs> not to come across as macabre but i really do find that sense of a past yeah um as though something is watching you uh some something you're not alone you know yeah. You're, yeah. there's something there with you yeah. and uh, that really appeals to me so. yeah well there and there's you know there's um you know i'm thinking uh so nula shared with me the the pieces that that that, that they have of yours and i'm thinking of the the painting um um, that you did probably fairly close after uh, I saw you. It's called John Early's Field. Yeah. Uh, and, um, you know, when I look at that painting, uh, I, you know, I think about these, these buildings and this, this farmyard uh, as being kind of the prows of the ship that are facing, you know, into the Atlantic and waiting for the next waiting for that next storm to come in and, and give them a good blast. Yeah. Uh, and, and um, you know, there, it's a unique, it's, it's, um, 
it presents us with an, an inner space, which these little farmyards are, they're these inner spaces. Uh, and, then, and then they're contemplating this great void, this, this, this outer space. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and the way that you, you render, um, that you render and draw us in to, um, to both of these places is, is by um, some, some cunning drawing in which we're, you're suggesting this farmyard, but by only giving us a slice of it, like the smallest slice of it, but we, we know it's there. Um, and, and, um, and, and then the, 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 the wall and then what's beyond, well, then there's the next building. Um, there's a building with a tower, then, then some, some, there's some telephone poles and some, uh, some, some trees and just this minimal amount of information, uh, um, can create quite a story. I mean, there's, we're ready for, we're ready for something to happen and uh and and it's really it's really quite engaging well yeah i i i was really you know it kind of goes without saying i'm sure you feel this way too but um i'm, I'm so dissatisfied with the majority of stuff that i make and quite quite often sort of give up in the middle of something that was a painting that um as soon as I was done, I, I was really happy with it. Mm -hmm. And I think for the reasons that you're talking about, it's a very elusive kind of thing, but the wall and the placement of the wall is a kind of screen. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've always been interested in Japanese gardens too, and mm -hmm. how they use screening devices to create a, a psychology of space where you want to go around that thing, or mm -hmm. you wonder what's on the other side of that thing, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Uh, and so those walls there, uh, it's funny how there's certain, there's certain buildings and certain uh, groups of buildings that offer, have always, that, that farm has given me a great deal of, of uh, good ideas mm. over the years. And I've, I've probably had uh, more successes there with, with works just because of the, the arrangement of the buildings and their proximity to the ocean, the bay, and then the map, the hills behind. Uh, yeah, and it's, I, I got to know John Early fairly well too, mm -hmm. which would require, a, you know, a whiskey about 11 o'clock in the morning sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> now, so was his place on the, on the, the, the uh i guess it would be on the eastern side of the of the bay so it would be on the opposite side of the village yeah right yeah um, and uh yeah that's so that would be and it's right out at the point yes so there is a ruin a little bit further out but mm -hmm. but his house uh is on this hill mm -hmm. and they call it the glebe house which right 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 yes yes yeah, it refers to um like a, a pastor's house or something, or Church of England. Uh, I don't think I don't think they they would call it, it, a Catholic priest would live in the parish house, right? I think, but yeah, I think in in uh, Church of England it would be the Glebe House. Yeah. But there's no church out there. I, I I don't know why. And as far as I know, it's always been in his family. Um, mm. But it's one of the few two two-story buildings too that right. just houses and that kind of standing up to that north atlantic is very impressive to me yeah 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 well so and the, you know what what i mean in terms of what you're talking about in terms of screening um you know leads me to the to the newest piece that they have which is which is um um has a trampoline in the yeah, yeah. in the center and there are two figures playing instruments in the front, and then, and then really the person on the trampoline who has this blue slicker um, looks like it's in full ascension, <laughs> yeah. uh, and and there's this there's this um, weightlessness that is really beautifully uh, expressed, uh, and and then these three 
side figures, um, two of which are, are looking off, they're looking off uh, the, the canvas. And then there is a, another figure that is engaging us as a viewer. Yeah. And, um, and it's, a very, it's a very arresting composition. And there are lots of interrelationships um, that are suggested. I mean, the, the, two, the two artists, the two people making music um, are in their own world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This this person on the trampoline is ascending to another world, uh -huh. and and then the the two side figures are engaged off off the canvas, um, and then you have the one person that's drawing us in or engaging us, all within the framework of multiple screens. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and I love the vernacular that I mean I was looking at the painting I was like my God. He managed to get almost every bit of that North Mayo vernacular in there. You have the stone walls with the topped little yeah. pieces. Uh, you have, um, well, you've got the bay, you've got the hills beyond, and you have this fog rolling in. Um, and uh, um, what else was I thinking? Um, uh, oh, you have the bungalow. Yeah, the kind of classic bungalow. bungalow. Uh, it's it's all there yeah. and and done in a um, in the, the field and the inner the inner barnyard and also there are there are two framing sets of softwood trees uh -huh. yeah. Uh, yeah. that 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 and that those softwood those softwoods are to me when I first came to to Mayo I thought what is the most incongruous thing that I could see in this landscape? And it was these stands of softwoods. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and you've managed to put this all together. There's a lot in that painting. <laughs> yeah, there's probably too much in that painting, but uh, yeah, I, I, I'm actually working on another uh, trampoline painting. It, it's one of those subjects that, you know, you. You see quite often, but uh, it suddenly occurred to me. I think over there, how what a bizarre, what a bizarre structure this is, you know, and especially in that landscape because you have these rural farms and you'll see a trampoline out back, you know, and it's so sweet because it gives the kids something to do in the summer months. Um, but it seems so incongruous, sort of like the trees in a way. Um, and I did think. Gosh, there's a lot of potential here, maybe for more than one. And I'm trying to do an American version of that now. Uh, and you're right with the ascension. Uh, I was a little, I was uncertain about it. And I really fretted about that because I didn't want to a reference to Mother Mary, you know. No, no. Uh, but I realized at some point, well, look, it's open to interpretation. People yeah. are going to see it that way. I'm drawn to this hovering figure. I think in my mind, I justified it more, not so much as a ascension. And again, this is all, you know, anybody's going to see what they want to see. But in my mind, just to get the, through the painting, I was thinking of it at that moment, just, just at that moment where the person starts to descend or where they might, they're in the middle of an ascent or a descent. They're, they're just that slight split second of time. Yeah. Yeah. And that kind of appealed to me uh, a lot within the framework. Uh, but yeah, that was a lot of fun working on that. I, I, it's a lot of struggle with the figurative paintings because I don't use models. I don't like working from models. Occasionally I have, but I, then I have to ask them if I can photograph them because I, I feel so bad making them stand there for any length of time. And it, it makes me self-conscious. So but I developed early on an ability to start um, working up from sketches and just working out little ideas. And quite often it's, if, it's just that I got to get an idea in my head. And uh, I, so I might see something in a newspaper or I might see something on, over there, the newspapers are great. The Western people, there's all these funny uh, 
images of these kids lined up, you know, with their teachers. And so sometimes that's kind of, I can, I'll see something like somebody in a pose and I'll go, oh, I'm, that, that'll work. And then I start drawing it up, but it's always got to go within the context of the painting, the lighting, the light right. sources I've got and other things. But yeah, so yeah, I was really, I was, I, I finished that painting and I was, I was thinking, God, I hate to take this off the stretchers. And, and um, uh, I think I said something to Margo about, could I just, I'm going to try to send this back. I, I, and then I looked into shipping and oh my God, the cost of shipping it was just, so I'd been asked to be in the RHA show. Um, and that I thought, well, this would be a good piece. So I'll just leave it here. And then I had it in the show and I'm trying to remember the whole story. But anyway, uh, at one point I was fretting about getting it home and Margo said, well, why don't you just leave it here? <laughs> I said, that sounds great to me. Well, so. you know, I, you know, I said, I said, you know, Ascension and that might've been a little blithe uh, because really it's weightlessness um, and gravity yeah. and, and these things that um, are, I would think a real challenge to try to try to express it. It, it, it it's a challenge, you know. But um, again, I have like like Suras drawings have always. I never liked Sura when I was in college because all I saw were the pointless paintings, and I was never really, mm -hmm. I, I never was really that taken with them. And then I saw his drawings, and I just got blown away. And suddenly, I saw his paintings in a completely different way. Right. But there's something about, and I can't really achieve it, but there's just that, that, that mystery of a particular pose mm. and w w searching for that pose that is relatively simple. You know, it's not dramatic. It's not, it's not Baroque. It, yeah. it somehow, again, a little ghostly, maybe. The yeah. kind well, of and rendered with Conte on that, on, on, on that, uh, slightly pebbled paper yeah there's raised. transparency you know yeah. there's that i mean they really are extraordinary and it's weird because working with that medium on that paper you know you can't erase because right. suddenly yeah. you you lose the texture of the page yeah and he, so he he just it's like he just dusted you know like yeah the charcoal or what it just kind of fell into place yeah yeah and you've got a figure there that's very convincing so yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm trying that's the big challenge now for me just trying to get back to that simplicity so. yeah well you know the 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 i mean i think what we're what i think it's a very challenging thing but what really works for me are the multiple levels of of framing that that are yeah. going on and and it's something and it's a real it's it's a motif that is uh i think incredibly successful and you know just to get back to that idea of screens uh -huh. um, you know those those uh those sets of softwoods um create this beautiful runway and then this this opening up of things that take us to yeah. the next to the next space that is yeah. down the bay or across the bay. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and, you know, I wanna know what's, I want for, because I'm the type of person that I am, it's like, I wanna go over there. It's like, yeah, I've yeah. had enough with these humans. I'm gonna keep <laughs> moving on, you know? Yeah, it's, it's uh, you no, know, the way you describe it, I, I really appreciate that because that's really what I'm, what I'm after. And you, you, you use the word stage and, and I think, yeah, it's, um, I think, I think it is. And it's what I, what I love about something like Bruegel, you know, where this is not the real world, you know, the real world isn't organized in with this much precision and purpose, you know, maybe the, maybe the built environment when it's really good, like, you know, a landscape architect or somebody can really do these magical things. Um, but it's not about the natural world. Yeah. And I, I think that's one of the things that really, uh, really appealed to me about Ireland because there really isn't a square inch that hasn't been touched. You know? oh. it's, it's, it's amazing. It's such a layering, isn't it? It's so layered. 
Yeah. And I think that's that really, I'm much more drawn to that kind of landscape than say, I mean, as beautiful as uh, and sublime as the West is, you know, and, and the national parks out West. And I love going there. I've never painted them. Yeah. Um, they, I don't know. I'm, I, it's the human component there in Ireland that I, it's like that, what I was saying, like people are watching us when we're painting out there. You know? Yeah. 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 And they're, they're either living or they're not, but, uh, you know, I was, I was also, I was also, you know, in knowing that I was going to be talking with you, um, I kind of was perusing some of your other pieces, um, some, some older uh, pieces that you've shown. And, um, you know, I was wondering uh, someone that an, an American artist that I, I really like, and I have no, I, I just like, I'll ask, I'll ask Randall if, if, if he ever looks at him is, is the photographer Paul Strand. Oh and yeah, I, yeah. Yeah. And, and he's someone that really, for me, um, is able to plumb a place yeah. uh, and create a story, uh, yeah. and uh, and and um, and also do it in and draw. Like when I look at his photography, I am, I am, um, I'm engaged. I you know I want to I want to have a conversation with it. Yeah, yeah. I love that era of photography very much. Uh, you know, Walker Evans and uh, uh, Imogene Cunningham, mm -hmm. am I saying that right? I, you know, all of them, I just found, again, these kind of magical moments and that's a photograph. How can, you know, yeah. Edwin Weston, it just blew me, you know, that's a pepper, you know, <laughs> or, or that's a nude. I mean, yeah. in, yeah. uh, or the sand dunes. Yeah, I, I mean, that's, I think that's why I, I have such, um, faith in design, mm -hmm. uh, because if you, if you can take something that's every day, but lift it, kind of find a way th visually to lift it out of the ordinary. Mm. Uh, and I definitely see that in your work too. And that same, that same need to kind of get beyond um, time passing very quickly right. and just recording it, uh, yeah. but yeah. trying to try to lock it down as mm -hmm. best we can somehow, you know. Um, yeah, and and the the part of part of the you know I was thinking of these these um, photographs that Strand did. I think they're they're I think they're in Brittany, um, and um, you know he's looking at the landscape and the peopled and the he, he's he's um, there might be Scotland. I don't know. It is definitely somewhere in Northern Europe, um, whether it's Brittany or, or Scotland or not. There is something in, in his choice of composition that um, brings me to, to your pieces. And it's, it's a narrative, I think. Um, it's like when I, when I see a lot of your paintings, I feel like um, I am a part of a narrative of a story that's 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 taking place. Yeah, I I, I like that. Uh, the the I really like the way uh, the filmmaker Werner Herzog uses landscape, his his idea of the landscape mm -hmm. and nature as a kind of character in. And I like movies that do that, where mm -hmm. a, a building becomes like a character, or a town becomes a character, or. Mm -hmm. um, I, it's, it's a kind of uh, anthropomorphizing or something, but I, I, it's 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 more than human. It's like a, it's sort of like the the sirens, you know, in a, or or the chorus in a Greek tragedy or something. It, that it's not part of the world, but it's there and it's and it's conscious of what you're doing. Yeah, and um, it may even have opinions about what you're doing. Uh, so that that the mystery of that really appeals to me a lot. Just yeah. uh, so I'm glad I'm glad you. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I, I was thinking I was thinking. You know, it's like writers that that um, that I read who are who create. I mean, there's so many uh, writers around the world who have created these kind of fictionalized towns and. Yeah. And there's one in Northern Vermont, he sadly d died a couple of years ago. His name was um, Howard Frank Mosier. And he created, uh -huh. he created this thing called Kingdom County, Vermont. Yeah. And um, at, 
the one level they seem very nostalgic. Yeah. Uh, then, but then all of a sudden you realize you're, you're in a, you're in a story that's essentially magical realism. Yeah. Um, and, and in a place at which, which a lot of the things that are happening in your paintings in which you have time condensing in which you have memory working and you have multi-generations and, and all of this stuff and ghosts, you know, yeah. there are a lot of, there are a lot of ghosts. Um, well, that's, and, yeah, that's what I, when I was young reading Faulkner and I didn't have a clue really <laughs> what, what I, um, but I was really drawn to that, the fact that he made up this whole county, you know, mm -hmm. and then, um, like I said, Flannery O'Connor, uh, but just the raw imagination of that and the freedom that allows you to kind of, uh, yeah, to get beyond, again, get beyond the everyday and maybe explore some ideas that are a little bit more uh, mysterious or hard to pin down. Yeah. So yeah. I like the ambiguity of it. I, yeah, I really yeah, yeah. Yeah, and just you know, probably one one final thing that I, I wanted to just just briefly talk about because I know it's 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 it is a big part of I think who you are and one of the pursuits that you like is really architecture, yeah. um, and and um, it's very apparent in in your work um, yeah. mm -hmm. and and uh, the 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 beautifully drawn uh, uh, buildings and the rendering of buildings and their their um, their reality uh, um, somehow you're able to to make something uh, three dimensional look look flat yeah. and and it's really it's uh, it's such it's such a twist uh, and and um, and I just uh, I'm I'm completely. Uh, I'm completely drawn. I mean, I'm very drawn to that within yeah. within your work, and I know I've seen your architectural drawings, and I know you do a lot. and uh, And I'm just, um, is that something that that you have always pursued, and is that something that you continue to do while you're in Ireland? And yeah, yeah, it was it was very funny. I I I try to figure out the origins of that a little bit. We we lived in a kind of suburban new house development in Topeka, Kansas when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And there were a lot of young kids there that I played with. And there was a creek nearby and there was a barn nearby, there was open fields nearby. And we would steal a lot of building materials from the house, new houses going up and we would build forts down in the woods, you know? And I think that was, that was part of it, really yeah. stimulated my imagination. And then, yeah. then when, when I was 10, a tornado took that neighborhood. We were in a tornado and it took the neighborhood and we, uh, we moved to, uh, well, I remember after uh, my parents, I think were very smart. They said, well, what kind of house would you like now? You know, what, cause this is pretty traumatic. And so why don't you draw a house that you'd really like to uh, live in, you know? And uh, the one reference I had was uh, in Bonanza, the old television show, the, <laughs> the house they had. So I was drawing, oh, I'd like a house like that, you know. Uh, I think that got me kind of drawing yeah. in that way. Yeah. And then when I was in college, I did, I, I actually made uh, good money working for a contractor who was putting up terrible houses. Mm -hmm. But uh, I would do architecture, I would draw houses for them in that standard three-dimensional way and then he would use them for um, advertising in the newspaper and right. then he would give them away to the owner when they bought a house and so I, I made pretty good money at that and I always enjoyed it so um, yeah I guess that's where it comes from a little bit but as, as I've gotten older and maybe it was there from the beginning but there is just something to me deeply mysterious about space and I think it's more in, it's more interior space mm -hmm. than uh, exterior. I th I think that's one of the one of the things that I'm drawn to, and like it, at John Early's is the, those those yeah. high yeah. walls that kind of create an indoor outdoor kind of yeah. feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, it's um, I mean it's it's they they are they are. Um, 
there's a, to me as a viewer, um, uh, there's a contradiction that my eye, and, I, and this is what I meant by, by saying this, this three-dimensional, this very convincing three-dimensional object, you have a way of, and I don't know if it's you, your use of tonality or if it's your use of uh, atmospheric color or, or what it is, but there is a, a, there's a flattening of the picture plane yeah. that is, is quite arresting because, um, because it, it contradicts the, the, um, the, the assured uh, rendering of that three-dimensional object. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and that's a really, uh, that to me, that is, that's the way I enter your work. Well, at, at, at that at that contradiction. Yeah, I think I, I've just always been drawn to that quality where you, I mean, again, looking at Vermeer, how this thing is so beautifully two dimensional. I mean, just as an object, yeah. you know, I want that object. Yeah, I don't, I, it's not like the space is very, very convincing, uh, but it always starts at the, the stage is the two dimensional yeah canvas you know yeah. and so everything is staged from there and right. there isn't a yeah i like to think there isn't a an angle or a, a horizontal or vertical that isn't fully considered right right We're, well it really i mean it's it's very it's very apparent um you know and then, you know just and also you know and i forgot i no, I should not have forgotten about the, the two portraits that you did, because I think you did those probably your first trip. Um, I, think it, I think it was later than that. No, I, I got to, yeah, I got to know Peter and Margo fairly, fairly well. And I, I think that I don't even remember they they asked me to do it. Mm -hmm. I, I need to talk to Margo about that because I don't exactly remember. Um, and I, I agreed I, with portraits. I'm really uh, hit and miss. I've done quite a few now, but I, I've never considered myself a portrait painter. Mm -hmm. uh, but I said, look, if if I'm satisfied with them, sure, I, I'd love to do it. If I'm not, don't get your hopes up because I, uh, if this goes south, I, I'm, there's nothing I can do to save it. But both of them were perfect. I mean, I did work from photographs because there just no, was no way. Peter yeah. was going to sit there. <laughs> I, no. mean, I don't know. But, well, uh, I have to say, you absolutely. When I look at those pieces, it takes me back to my first trip. You know, nineteen ninety six. I mean, and you, you, you know, as 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 an observer, um, you know, I am seeing Peter, who could never stop working with his hands. You know, I see, can see him looking down yeah. at his hands or fiddling with something as he's in the middle of an incredibly deep thought, something yeah. that he's considering. Well, you know, I, always, <laughs> I always felt that Peter was, uh, uh, I always felt he was brooding a little bit and brooding on something, you know, something was either it was a problem with a design because he was really a, a great designer or it was just something you know about life or something <laughs> whatever it was and I thought this is what I really want to get out of it I yeah. want to get that that slight that that quality of brooding yeah and I wondered how they would respond to it but they they loved it and then oh yeah it's with Margo, it's spot on. With Margo yeah. I, I had more of a challenge really I wasn't quite sure mm -hmm. Margo is so elegant and mm -hmm. And, and, and beautiful, but she's not superficial at all. You know, I mean, no. there's a real intensity there that was similar. She and Peter, they had that same, mm. you know, I mean, yeah. elegance and uh, refinement, but there was a lot of complexity there, you know, yeah. they were never posing for anything. Yeah, and so, well, and with hers, there's a sense of, I mean, it's such, they were such great foils as a couple. <laughs> For one yeah. another, you yeah. know, with, with hers, there's this kind of, there's a, there's a, there's a confidence, and there's, um, there's, a, uh, she's present, 
Yeah. Uh, and, and, and there's, a, and, and thought, you know, she's, she's, she's thoughtful. Um, and um, not that Peter was not all of those things, but Peter came about his process of communicating in such a different way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Peter lived a very inward life. I think yeah. he could be very social, but I think, I think at the end of the day, he, 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 he was a very inward kind of personality and, and enjoyed his, his solitude, you know, yes. uh, yeah. where Margot was, was uh, more outgoing, uh, always very gracious and, and, uh, and very loving person, but not in a gushy sort of way, you know, yeah. the last thing yeah. she wanted. Yeah. So I, I really did try to get that into the, the, the thing that helped. And then we probably should stop it. Yeah. I noticed, so she had in her glasses, there was this little prism mm -hmm. that showed up. Mm -hmm. And it's where I, I think the lens changed, you know, in that little division in the lens. And I just focused on that. Um, yeah. And that really, that seemed yeah. to sum her up, that kind yeah. of perceptive, yeah. very articulate, um, spot on sort of, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, I, yeah, I'm very, I, I think out of all the paintings in the collection, I'm probably the most proud of those. Um, yeah, well, they're yeah. beauties. They really are. And I think that they're, you know, um, as kind of as a as a time stamp, um, they they provide the collection with with two really important pieces. Uh, yeah, and that that has meant a lot to me. That yeah. that both Peter and Margot, I th I think, felt that they 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 were happy. <laughs> I think to be represented by those paintings. Yeah, as as time goes by, you know, yeah. so. That that's a great feeling, you know, yeah. to be able to do that.